And Babylon, um, we talked about in the previous lesson, Babylonian uh, started a, a religious system. And this is the religious system with the bell worship that the Jews got taken, got uh, off track with, leaving from God. And it's uh, the basis of most pagan religions, the basis of of many religions, and it's uh, and a lot of its practices have become mainstream, and a lot of its practices have been introduced into Christianity. So, for instance, the origins of Easter and Christmas, things like the Christmas tree, the Yule log, Easter bunnies, Easter eggs, came from the Babylonian religion. You know, you know the worship of saints, the worship of female deities like Mary. It came from their basis from the Babylonian religion. So we talked about how that is a potential for the leaven that was mixed in to the kingdom. And so, yeah, so these are example 11. And so I, I remember I went, to, so I went to Zambia in July and I saw something that reminded me of this. It was, they had a, a pond or a lake and it had seaweed in it. And he was saying the seaweed has become a big problem because they don't have seaweed in in Zambia. He said, but some people, somebody brought it in. They think there's a lot of Chinese there now. So they brought it in and it got into the water system. But since it's not naturally there, it doesn't have a whole ecosystem around it. You know, if, if something is natural in a place, then there's an ecosystem. Something eats it and something eats that and but there was nothing that eats the seaweed or nothing that removes the seaweed. So the seaweed just grew and grew. And it was sent to the point where sometimes it would come out of there, your water faucet, come oh, out wow. in your house. <laughs> You'd get seaweed growing yeah. in. So it just, this growth was unimpeded because it was this foreign thing that was introduced. In that. So I kind of see that as how the leaven it just permeates the church. It's this foreign thing that, that is, uh, you know, people weren't prepared to battle it. And it's just permeating through the church. So we'll get into that. I'm just curious, in Revelations here, what were you saying, like, specifically was the basis for mm. a lot of these other, like, spin-off religions? Oh, okay. Good question. Yeah. It's, um, so Babylon, the original Babylon, yeah. was back, um, the Tower of Babel, right. Nimrod days, and so they had a, a religion there, a religion that some people refer to it as the mystery religion of Babylon. Mm -hmm. It was, it was, uh, he was worshipped as the king, his wife, mother, mm -hmm. was the same, turned out to be the same thing, was the queen, and they had a religious system, Asherah, and, and he was worshipped as a sun god, and she was worshipped as the moon goddess, and so that religion also basically spread to different areas mm -hmm. and so it kind of cropped up and so in in Egypt it was it was uh, Isis and Osiris mm -hmm. you know and in Greek it was Zeus and whoever Zeus's wife yeah, was yeah with an H no, Athena was some it was like a dog. Helen no. yeah it was like Helen or something but so, it wasn't Oh, it's going to bug me. Yeah, but, I know it's kinda, but, it, but it's the same, but it's the same religion. It's just propped yeah. up in different ways. And so, and a lot of the practices, so the, and, uh, you know, the, and Isis' own Osiris' son, Horus, was uh, Horus, you know, the, the eye of Horus, the all-seeing eye. And so mm -hmm. it's, it's a lot of, it's a system that permeated into a lot of other religions and a lot of other culture and and so the the he was supposed to have died and come back to life and so they had a tree that symbolized him his birthday and and the tree the grow growing symbolized his life around december 25th and and you know and and his his uh wife was known as ishtar in Egypt, and she that was supposed to have died went up to heaven, came down in an egg, and I think a, she was, came back on a duck to land, and a rabbit saved her, so she gave him the powder to lay eggs. So they celebrated Ishtar. They had a big festival, and the, like the 
something like the second, the Monday after, the Sunday after the second full moon in March or something. Mm -hmm. And they had a, you know, pagan festival and they, and it was celebrating Ishtar and which is Ish, which became Easter. Mm -hmm. And so the Catholic church decided, well, since everybody's celebrating, and Constantine, since everybody's celebrating these pagan holidays, we'll just put our holidays on the same days. Mm -hmm. So they'll convert. Yeah, that makes sense. I mean, sense, uh, I mean, logically, I mean, not not necessarily spiritually, but <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. So yeah, it's yeah. Like give them an it's not not necessarily, yeah. So <laughs> so that's so that's the claim. So it's like okay, they're you know everybody you know they're worshiping the tree god and the the god of the the harvest and the god of this. So we'll give them these saints. You mm -hmm. can pray to these saints now instead of praying to your god. And so a lot of the things that came into the church were based on the original pagan practices right. from their religion and so yeah and so that were in the origins and then you know even new things now coming from it through you know new age and other areas mm -hmm. are coming in so that's specifically yeah and so why does like the ba why does babylon like why does the name reoccur like you mean you have ancient babylon but then he's calling this future um, Babylon. Know, empire, I guess, Babylon. Yeah. So, so it's yeah. So if the so my opinion would be that so the the Babylonian religion continued or something continued and and is not necessarily practiced openly now, but it will be in the future. So and uh, and there's a you know place place in Revelation it talked about something that was is not but will be and so it's I mean but it's the same so the same foreign practices or or whether it's literally the same or or just represented of it but will be other foreign practices pagan practices that will be dominant and be mm -hmm. mainstream okay. religion and it, yeah kind of ties back to the mystery religions of Babylon. Right. And you could probably argue today with all the New Ageism. The New Ageism that and... That's maybe kind of where some, you're starting to see it come Yeah, and then, the you know, mainstream. some people would argue the with the various secret societies and the, right. and the, what is practiced yeah, there. Yeah, they've like continued the, the mystery religions, and if, for sure. whether or not those will become mainstream again Yeah. would be one reason this the Babylon would be in, in the mm -hmm. future. The new, uh -huh, yeah. Makes sense. That's actually yeah. It's cool. I mean, it's cool that it makes yeah. sense. <laughs> <laughs> it's not like not like a good yeah. thing. It's just like, it's like okay. It's, it fits. It fits. Yeah. It fits yeah. It's cool that it fits. <laughs> Amen. Yeah. So the so the parable of the mustard seed is saying that the kingdom will grow large but it will have external influences for so the parable 11 is talking about there will be internal influences mixed in so all four parables are talking about kingdom being impacted in unexpected ways Un unpleasant ways uh, negative ways negative yeah ways. negative ways they're, they're all warnings <laughs>